wonderful to be here. I'm seeing a lot of faces that I haven't seen for a while, and I hope I get to catch up with everybody um, later tonight and, uh, and tomorrow at the event. Um, but I'm particularly excited to be here to um, establish this award tonight, a Young Visionary Award, um, for one of our YOW members who has been um, particularly inspiring and engaging. And um, it's really meaningful to me to see YOW grow the way that it has because I really owe so much to this organization for helping me find sort of what my, my journey and my passion is in life. Um, as Vicki said, I learned about the organization in 2007 and I came to an event my mom brought me because she knew um, I was studying African history, I was really interested in international development. Um, she came to uh, an, uh, an opportunity event herself and thought, you know, maybe I should bring Liesl, I think she might be really interested. So I came to an event, I learned all about microinsurance. I like accosted Richard Leftley after a panel to hear more about how that was possible. I heard about weather index crop insurance. I heard about how important savings were. Um, I learned about how they established interest rates and I thought this was really fascinating and life changing. So I went back to college and I told all my friends and they were also really excited. This was right after Muhammad Yunus had won the Nobel Peace Prize. People were talking about sustainable development in a new way. And here's this organization that had been around for 40 years, was working in many, many countries that they'd never heard about. And so I came back and I asked the board and I asked the leadership, so how are we gonna engage this next generation? There's a lot of energy. They're very excited about this. They wanna change the world. How do we tell them at a young age what's going on? Can we bring them on some of these trips? Can we have you know, events that are led by the next generation for the next generation and connect them with loan officers so that at these formative times in their lives, they can learn about what someone else's experience is. And particularly, remember this was 2007 and a lot of my friends thought they were going into banking. Um, <laughs> and so they were really engaged around the, 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 wow, this is financial services that can be used in a really powerful way. And, and I actually think this is a great time to talk to the next generation about how can we be good stewards of banking services and financial services, because there are ways that you can do it that are really empowering, and there are ways that you can do it that are not. And this is a generation that understands that deeply. Um, and so that's why Yao was really established, was to um, find a way for this generation to plug in. And it's amazing to see that in the six years since it was established under the leadership of all of these chapter members, some of which are here tonight, and the staff of Opportunity International, it's really grown. It's really taken off um, because this, the message of an organization like this really fits in well with what this generation is passionate about. Um, and so tonight, I am particularly honored to inaugurate the first Blue Haven Initiative Young Visionary Award. And I just wanted to say a word about why we're calling it the Blue Haven Initiative Award and what the heck is Blue Haven Initiative. Um, as Vicki mentioned, it's the family office of my husband and I. Um, and what we're doing now is we've decided to um, think about how we invest our money holistically. Um, what are we giving away? And then what are we investing in as well? And I think those two things are equally important. Um, so we look for and seek out social businesses, businesses that have some kind of measurable or environmental goal that's integrated into how the business runs. It's not CSR, it's not a donation after the profits have been made, 
but how are businesses being created so that they have community in mind, so that they have their end users in mind, so that we're not making a mess that we have to clean up later. So we look for these kinds of businesses, many of which are actually um, in, in countries where OI works, in Colombia, in Kenya, in Ghana. Um, and a lot of the work that we're doing now was inspired by those first trips that I took to Africa with Opportunity International. And so this organization and, and what Blue Haven Initiative um, has become are really intertwined for me. Um, and another thing that I think is, is really in keeping with the spirit of Yao um, and that I see in a lot of Yao members and also in the recipient of tonight's award is I think a truly underrated value uh, that this generation really has and that is impatience. We're very impatient. I don't want to wait until I'm older to give money away. I don't want to wait until the business has done well before it actually um, impacts its end users. So um, in that spirit, I would like to introduce you to Catherine Haley, who is the inaugural recipient of the Blue Haven Initiative Young Visionary Award. So I met Catherine for several years ago, yes. But let me tell you more. So Catherine was one of the co-chairs of the DC chapter um, of the Young Ambassadors. And under her leadership, that chapter really grew to be one of the most active chapters that we had, I mean, still is. Um, and Catherine has really leveraged her network uh, to advocate for the work of Opportunity International and microfinance. Um, she's been to Nicaragua on an insight trip with Yao and with OI, and um, also was just in Tanzania. Um, but her passion for service doesn't just stop with Yao. She, um, in her day job, is the uh, assistant to the Speaker of the House on um, uh, policy and, and other special initiatives. And she's a really, really incredible, she leads by example. So for the past two years, Catherine has been Opportunity International's top fundraiser for the Live Below the Line Challenge, which, if you don't know, is a challenge that for a full week, um, people who take this challenge live on uh, eat and drink on less than $1.50 a day to raise awareness and support for the 1.2 billion people that are living below the extreme poverty line. So Catherine has been the top fundraiser taking that challenge on behalf of Yao for the last two years. So please join me in honoring Catherine Haley. Um, thank you so much, Liesl. I just, uh, I, if you all don't know, obviously you just had a brief introduction and a little bit of, uh, you were able to meet Liesl if you haven't already up here on this podium. Um, Liesl is an amazing visionary and without her leadership and her passion, I think many of the young professionals that are here wouldn't be here today. And I think she has embraced this idea of we can't wait um, and has shared that with so many of the chapters and I think has really probably pressed the board um, of opportunity to really think globally in a different way. So use of new media, which I'm not very good at except for living below the line. I use it a lot. Um, I have probably only like 30 followers, but those 30 followers <laughs> hear about my <laughs> starving weeks. Um, but, <laughs> um, but just honestly, I just have to say thank you so much for not giving up. I know this is my award, but um, a lot of us wouldn't be here without uh, your faithfulness. Um, 
I think personally why I care about opportunity and its work, I learned about it about 11 years ago where a regional director came to my family's home and they asked, hey, can you throw this fundraiser? And my parents didn't do microfinance. They, they're not finance people at all. They support lots of ministries, but this was foreign. Um, and so they, out of deference to this family friend, said, sure, we'll bring people with deep pockets who care about finance. I had just visited uh, Kenya two weeks prior with my church at the time and learned about this idea of microenterprise and the transformational impact that having a little skill and a little bit of resources could not only provide for themselves, but also specifically for women with HIV, they could have a little bit more money to help pay the school fees so that their kids may have a little bit better chance than maybe they did. And so in telling my parents, I was like, this is legit. Like, whatever this is, we have to be involved with this organization. So um, being able to go to Rwanda with my family and then to Nicaragua several years ago, a number of you I got to travel with. Um, I just want to leave you with one story. Um, a young woman we met, her name is Chantal. Uh, she was... Uh, somewhat of a timid woman. She spoke very, very quietly, but there was this incredible sense of pride. And I think Lydia was our interpreter because um, she spoke French. I think she was our own fr only French speaker. And this young woman spoke very quietly and she shared that her husband, she had two small children. He would give her very few resources to buy food for the family. Um, and she went on and she's like, you know, he. I was just really secluded, but my friends told me about this trust group, and this trust group said that I could have a business, and that I could sell stuff, and that I could have resources, and then I could pay for my family um, to go to school and such. And anyway, so she's like, but I didn't have any skills. And she said, but my trust group helped me figure out what I was good at, and then they helped me figure out how I could market that skill. And now I have not just a $50 loan, but I now have a $200 loan, and my husband respects me. And we're all like, well, that's great. And she's like, no, you don't understand. My husband is a taxi cab driver, and not very long ago, he cracked his windshield, and he did not have the money to turn his cab in that Friday, and if he had, with that crack, he would have been penalized. But I loaned him the money, and he owed me. But he was out of the doghouse, and he was able to turn in his cab, and everything was fine. So the work that Opportunity does, if you talk to anybody here, it is unbelievable. And I honestly believe that it is the way out of poverty for the 1.2 billion people that we talked about earlier. So. Thank you all for your support and for this tremendous honor.